Welcome to episode 76 in our series on Rabbeinu Bahia's uh, Duties of the Heart. And we are still in chapter 3 of the 8th gate, the gate of self-accounting. And in this episode, uh, we're going to deal, be dealing with number 15 out of 30 of the uh, ways of self-accounting that um, dominate this chapter. And um, we're going to talk about life's journey and the provisions we must make on this journey. Um, so Rabbeinu Bahia begins. <clears throat> One should make a personal accounting regarding how he makes provisions for his subsistence in advance before he actually needs them, even though he does not know if he will live long enough to benefit from them. Similarly, when he must set out on a long trip, he prepares the provisions for his trip days in advance. He finds out what merchandise is marketable in the place of his destination, what his means and transportation will be, what supplies he will be needing, with whom he will be traveling, and in what kind of accommodations he will be lodging whilst on the road, and similar matters. Without knowing what the Creator has foreordained for him in this regard, or how he has to live. So Rabbeinu Bahia is telling us on this trip, this long journey of life, we have to set ourselves up in the best possible manner. Uh, we must prepare ourselves in the right way, with a degree of foresight, for, to achieve the best trip possible and uh, and the rest is up to God he's saying he continues in the same way my brother we must be ready for the appointed time and be prepared for the long journey to the other world which one can neither escape nor avoid we must give thought to the provisions we should take with us and with what we should meet our creator on the great day of reckoning of with which scripture says and he quotes from kings 319 for behold the day is coming burning like an oven. So how can we neglect this duty when the journey is continuous, leading constantly from place to place, when the road is a long one and the resting place far away? Why have we not taken it to heart to remember our latter end? Why have we not thought of the provisions we should make for our final destination? We have concerned ourselves with a world that is transient and forsaken one that is lasting, preoccupied ourselves with the ills of our bodies and forgotten the maladies of our minds, engaged in the service of our base instinct and forsaken the service of our Creator. We have served our own selfish desires and have not served our gods. Alas, for this confusion, how blind it is. Alas, for this drunkenness, how strong it is. As it says in scripture, and he quotes from Yeshayahu, chapter 44, verse 18, their eyes are plastered over so that they cannot see, and their minds so that they cannot think. They are drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not from strong drink. That's also from Yeshayahu, chapter 29, verse 9. So, uh, Rabbeinu Bahia is uh, comparing our life here to a journey and how we should uh, prepare our provisions for the world to come and take as much effort as we look after our bodies uh, in, the, in the welfare of our soul, looking after our soul and perfecting our soul. Uh, this is very important. Um, and we're going to do number example 16 now, which is a very serious subject, when, how we should contemplate the approach to each and every one of our own ends, our death. So he continues, number 16. One should make an accounting with himself as to the length of his stay in this world and observing the sudden death of other living beings, whether human or other forms of life, consider the nearness of his own end, the approach of his own death. He should consider this when observing how death comes without one having prior knowledge of it, without a hint, how at no given time is one secure from it. There is no, nothing to delay it coming in any month of the year, on any day of the month or at any hour of the day. It does not come only in old age, to the exclusion of middle age, young manhood, adolescence, childhood and infancy. Rather, it can befall the living in any season, at any time, in any place. 
A person should think of himself as if the king had placed a deposit in his charge without setting a date for its return, commanding him to expect him at any time, not to leave for another place, but to be present when the king should ask for him. Would it be conceivable for him to leave the king's place while the deposit was still in his charge? Others draw the following analogy. Consider someone with an outstanding debt, with no specific time set for repayment. He must expect his creditor at any time. He will have no peace of mind until he repays him. When a person reckons with himself how long he has lived in this world and remembers that many of his friends have gone on before him to the next world, leaving when they had every expectation of remaining amongst the living, and he sees nothing superior in himself to to deserve living longer than they did. He will then limit his worldly aspirations and aspire for his latter ends. He will give thought to the provisions he will need when he sets out on his journey and will reckon with himself before the day of reckoning. Uh, one of the wise remarked, he who has placed death before him has improved himself. The wise one also said, the thoughts of the wise are in the house of the morning, as Kohela 7.4. Better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, for that is the end of every man. Let the living then meditate in his heart. That's also a very uh, profound statement from uh, Ecclesiastes 7.2. Uh, the living refers to one whose heart is alive. That is, one who has understanding and insight. It says further in Psalms, chapter 144, verse 4, man is like a breath, and uh, breath, is, breath is transient. So this is a, it's a fantastic, uh, but, you know, puts things into perspective with the concept of death. And this is what he, 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 uh, he urges us, like King Solomon urges us as better to go to a shiva than to go to a uh, uh, a wedding feast or some sort of uh, festive occasion because it gives you perspective. Your end is inevitable and you have one chance to perform your service. And we don't know when. It also says in Pukovas, repent a day before your death. Uh, which begs the question, when is the date of your death? It is unknown to us, as Rabbeinu Bahia has pointed out, so we must make amends every day. We must act as if today is the last day of our lives. We can fall asleep and perhaps not wake up. So we must make sure that um, we uh, fill the time we have with the best possible use of it, the time. And um, even though this uh, particular episode is perhaps a little bit morbid, sometimes it needs, we need this wake up call, this perspective that uh, really will push us onto the <clears throat> better path for ourselves. And in the next episode, the next example, number 17, is going to deal with the positives of solitude, uh, personal solitude, and the ill effects of association with sort of uh, fools, he puts, or bad uh, friends. So uh, I look forward to delivering that next episode.